It's time to brew a wheat beer, and unlike its German counterpart, which has esters of banana and clove, an American wheat beer is bready, grainy, and a little bit hoppy. Let's brew one. Hi, I'm Martin Keen, and this is my homebrew challenge to brew 99 BJCP beer styles once a week. This is my fourth one, it's 1D American Wheat. Now the grist for this beer style typically consists of about 50% white wheat malt. And then the other 50% is some kind of barley, typically either two-row or Pilsner malt. I'm going for a very simple mix of six pounds of two-row and six pounds of American wheat. And because this beer does contain a large amount of wheat, I'm using rice hulls as well. So let's talk rice hulls. When you're brewing with wheat beer, you don't get the husks when you mill that wheat in the same way that you do with barley. And that can mean that you end up getting a stuck sparge. The way I can tell I have a stuck sparge is when the sight glass starts dropping in the mash tun. So to address that issue, I'm using a liberal amount of rice hulls. These effectively supplement the husks that we're not getting from the wheat grain. And if I use enough, it really does seem to fix my stuck sparge issues. Hops are a mixture of Centennial and Halital, and I'm using 0.75 ounces of Centennial as the bittering hop. The rest of the hops go in at flame out, that's one ounce each of Centennial and Halital. Okay, everything seemed to go pretty well. The beer has come out at 10.48. We were going for 10.49, so that looks good to me. Now let's talk yeast. Normally I make a starter a couple of days ahead of brew day, uh, cold crash it, and then decant and pour it in. I only got home from a trip yesterday, so I didn't have time to do that. So I just made a starter last night, and I am going to pitch directly from that starter into the wort, stealing a bit of that starter, so I'll have some yeast to harvest for next time. The yeast I'm using is WLP001, so that's California Ale Yeast. And I'm going with that because we want this really clean profile from the yeast. We don't want any esters giving that sort of banana or clove flavor. So a bit of a uh, surprise on this beer here in uh, its appearance. Uh, this beer ended up being repurposed for a first birthday party for Zoe. And we ordered a pink beer. Yeah. <laughs> so what we did is I took four pounds of raspberries, I boiled a bag, put the raspberries into the bag. Um, the raspberries were frozen, so they're already sanitized. Dropped them into the keg, and in three days took a tasting and immediately decided no more raspberries. Yeah, we needed to pull it out. <laughs> like it got very raspberry very quick. Uh, so we have already tasted this beer a few days ago, but uh, we've given it a bit of time to settle. And carbonate. So, and, and to carbonate, yeah, because it, uh, it was flat. So, uh, first of all, appearance. Uh, this definitely doesn't look like your average wheat beer. Yeah, yeah. No, it it's, doesn't. It's uh, got some colour to it. It looks exactly like a raspberry colour. Are you done with your appearance? Can we, oh. Let's pass you to Dad over there. Okay, baby gone. Um, <laughs> right, so yeah, what do you think about the appearance? Well, the appearance, like you said, it, it's meant to be a wit beer, is that correct? Yes, it's an American wheat. American wheat, so yeah, first period I would never think that it would be an American wheat. It's not like your average looking blue moon or something. No. Um, I would just be very intrigued when I saw it with how deep of a red color it is. Yeah, and I thought we, I thought it was gonna need a lot longer to yeah, get this it color. Yeah, it didn't. No. All right, so aroma. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Raspberry, I think, is the uh, definitive on that one. There, yeah, there's no mistaking that. 
Let's try the taste. Oh, it doesn't taste like raspberries at all. Just, just kidding. <laughs> taste? Raspberry. That tastes really good. That tastes a lot better than when we tried it before we took the raspberries out. It doesn't taste like a regular wheat beer would. It does have a kind of like I said a ghost or a sour type, type taste to it, but it's not overpowering. Like I could drink a full pint of this. So just a note on this beer, by the way, um, because the fruit went in post fermentation, there is a ton of sugar in this keg. Uh, so if this beer was not kept cold, it could uh, re-ferment, and I mean in a keg it's just going to get a bit fizzier. But if you were bottling this beer, it could be uh, somewhat of a disaster. So yeah, keep that in mind. All right, well, I think this has turned out to be uh, an improvisation that was quite successful. Mm -hmm. And happy birthday to Zoe. Happy birthday, Zoe.